well, what we have here is a really old mine, uh, and there's before White Nose Syndrome about 10,000 bats that were hibernating in here, and uh, it got White Nose Syndrome last year, and we lost about 50% of the bats. This is a cold-loving fungus, and its optimal growth rate is around 40 to 50 de uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what these hibernaculum are. They're they're cold, damp places, and this fungus just thrives in this environment. The bats, their normal body temperature when they're flying around in the summer is about 101 degrees. Um, so, but when they go into hibernation, their temperature drops to uh, just a degree or two above the ambient temperature inside here. So they'll, they're you know in the 40s uh, at this site, mid 40s or so. So. Uh, when they're hibernating, they go down into torpor for about uh, 15 to 20 days where they're at that 40 degree temperature and then they'll just warm up for about an hour or two and then go back down into, into hibernation. And so when they're in that hibernating state, their immune system is shut down and this fungus is just attacking them and eating them alive, basically. Right now, since it's just fresh, the fungus is around here below the elbow and close to the body a little bit up around the wrist. I'm going to put this over this UV light. So where we saw the highest concentration of fungus was below that elbow and towards the body wall, a little bit out around towards the wrist, and that's exactly where we see all this fluorescent area on this bat wing. And the places where the fungus has invaded the outer layer of the skin and is now digesting the mucus and the mucous membranes and the muscle and that kind of thing inside the the skin layer there. That's what that fluorescent area is. So what we're looking for is an agent that will kill the fungus, won't harm the bats, and won't harm the native ecology of a cave. Um, because bats aren't the only organisms that live in a cave, so there are a lot of other species that are dependent on fungi. So we've done a lot of experiments in the lab trying to find something that will kill the fungus without harming the bat and without harming the normal fungi that live in the cave. So we've screened almost a hundred of these and we found three different compounds. Two are made by plants and one is actually made by bats themselves. And we're looking to see if we diffuse this almost like aromatherapy, if we diffuse this around the bats, is it enough to protect the bats from whiteness syndrome and give us a way of maybe protecting really important um, hypermacula from the fungus? So in the spring we're going to come back and hopefully all the bats will be in the cages. Um, and then we know that this, this site got hit real hard with whiteness syndrome. It's likely that every bat that we put in those cages oh, has whiteness syndrome on it. So we're going to go cage to cage and basically look at mortality. So how many of those bats died? The urgency comes from how rapidly this thing is moving. I mean, everybody thought it was a disease of the, the, north, the northeast up in New York. In 2006 and 2000, it was seven. It was seen. In 2008, you know, it moved around and looked like it was staying in that general area. And then in 2009, it made this massive geographic jump. And then last year, it made another massive geographic jump graphic jump. So states that didn't think they had to worry about white nose syndrome for two or three or even four years were seeing it that year. So all the management um, policies that needed to be in place for controlling access, doing back counts, getting baseline data, all the data you want to have before an epidemic like this hits, people were scrambling because they didn't have time to do it. This site here, we do have a good number of bats in there still. Um, you know, it started with 10,000 bats, and we only went through the upper third of it today, and we saw uh, several hundred in there where there should be a couple thousand. But you know, that may be 20 or 30 percent survivorship from last year. So it had white nose all last year, and that is better than what we've seen in, in some of the other sites where we have 99 percent mortality even in a single year at some sites. So. So hopefully there's something special about this site, some environmental conditions that may be conducive to a little bit higher survivorship.